Man. Thanks for listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast coming to you live from Los Angeles. Uh, ben w- with Ben White, I'm Mike Luke. All right, we got a lot to get to this show. Arizona was, uh, listen, this is a game that Arizona 1,000% deserved to lose, and they started out slow. Not only did they start out slow, everybody on the perimeter was absolutely terrible. There is, uh, there's no way around it. Kylan Boswell was terrible. Caleb Love was extra terrible. Pella Larson was extra terrible as well. You're not going to win any games, Ben, when you have three players that are extra terrible. It's unfortunate because it's very similar to what happened last year where Arizona's guards were nowhere to be found. And really hard to win a game, Mike, when you can't make a three shot, you can't force shots at the rim willingly, knowing you have the advantage. A lot of dumb turnovers. I mean, just collectively a a disaster for Arizona. And and it was a five-point game, but Arizona only had a lead there for, what, about 30 seconds there in the second half. They played like crap the first 10 minutes. Clemson couldn't miss. And... Caleb Love, Kylan Boswell, nowhere to be found. Jaden Bradley kept Arizona in the game in stretches, but collectively just a really poor effort all around. And, you know, the score may not necessarily reflect that the final score, but, you know, Mike, Arizona was really never in this game, and I think that's the disheartening part about it. Yeah, and I think the other thing that was a little frustrating, too, is that uh, not only was Arizona not in the game, but when Arizona got Clemson into the uh, bonus Arizona just decided to keep shooting threes. Yeah. That will not work, especially when you have players that are not shooting threes that are not making it. But again, this thing comes down to me for three things. Kylan Boswell all season is basically, there's been some games, but he's basically been a non-factor. So that is what it is. I love Caleb Love, but, or I love Caleb Love this season for the good majority of it, but Caleb Love was terrible. Caleb Love just kept shooting and kept shooting and kept shooting and kept shooting, and none of the shots were going in. I wish that Tommy Lloyd had had him go to the basket a little bit more, but, and then to compound it as well, Pella Larson was also awful. Um, that's not going to, uh, the only uh, the only silver lining is that Jaden Bradley was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Jaden Bradley was, uh, you know, obviously very, very good. They need to have more Jaden Bradley out there going forward. But um, that is a uh, argument, that is a discussion for another day. Um, everything was set up well for Arizona to be able to get to a uh, to an Elite Eight at least. And this did not happen. That did not happen. Not only did it not happen, it... Um, that's that's really all I can say, Ben. It didn't happen, and they were absolutely terrible. That's uh, that, that that's that's just the way it is. I wish I could say look, something else, but look, there wasn't. Look, Arizona one hundred percent beat themselves today, and when you looked at the way these two teams matched up, Clemson, obviously you've got Hall down low who can make things happen for them. But outside of that, man, you don't really have dynamic playmakers or guards who can take you off the dribble or shoot three after three. And, and that was what was so just frustrating about the game because they had a number of different guys, Hunter, Hall. You had three guys in double figures, two of them not being Hall, and that can't happen. At one point, Clemson was shooting, what, 70% from three. Arizona was giving easy, easy bus- bucket after easy bucket, and it, it just was a domino effect, and everything went wrong. Caleb Love had no confidence whatsoever. You know, and, and, and let's be real here. When we talk about the NCAA tournament, when we're talking about a Sweet 16 game, if Caleb Love, your best player, is 0 for 9 for 3, has three turnovers, is as inefficient as humanly possible, the guy could not get a shot going at all tonight, probably not going to win in March. Right. And I think the team felt that. I think the energy was low because of that. And from a game planning standpoint, I thought it was pretty simple. You had the advantage down low, and when Arizona did go to Ballo and try to get things going at the rim, it worked. But consistently, there just wasn't that taking place. Guards were forcing shots. Arizona did not play well defensively, and this is what happens. All right, uh, we see Rich Carrillo in here. Rich Carrillo, who never played a down of football in his life and who blocks all of us on Twitter and then decides that he is going to continue to do that. Rich, everybody's seen the pictures out there. Rich, you can be... uh, you can, uh, you can buzz off because, again, you block everybody and you are a fun person. But everybody else that is actually having a, a good time, well, not a good time, but a, a frustrating time, let's talk about it here. With uh, Arizona, with Arizona, I think the one thing that uh, is, uh, is fascinating is just the lack of kind of a just the lack of any kind of urgency going yeah. into this game, Ben. That's where, I've, that's where I was frustrated by every, you know, I, I just didn't expect that in a game of this magnitude. 
Yeah, and, and look, I mean, that's got to be on the coach, right? That's got to be on Tommy Lloyd. Obviously, he's had a lot of success here in the regular season and has done a number of good things. But Tommy Lloyd's got to take the fall for this one, man, because th this team was not ready. The energy was not there. Collectively, the game plan, I thought, was pretty poor. And it just felt like from the get-go, when Clemson got going from three, Arizona just had that presence and, and that look to them like, okay, there's always the next possession. There's the next yeah. possession. We'll make a shot. Somebody will get going. And I think the ironic part about it, too, is outside of love, granted because he did take 18 shots, it just seemed like outside of love and Bradley, nobody for Arizona really wanted the ball either. I right. mean, you got the ball inside to Ballo at times, and it did work, but Boswell was not there. Pella Larson was not there. It, it was just a disaster for Arizona from the get-go. I mean, to only shoot 18% from three, and granted, I think the majority of that comes from Boswell, who made that three to start the game. So Arizona was just flat. I mean, that's the best way to put it today. They were just flat. They weren't really engaged, you felt like, just because Mike... I, I don't think we thought coming into this game that Clemson was just going to make so many easy shots at the basket, too. Yeah, I mean, that but, was crazy. But that's also something, too, that you got to give it into. There, I don't want to say Arizona gave up because they kept fighting, but it felt like Clemson had a really, really good game plan going into this game. Not only did they have a really good game plan going into this game, you could kind of sense early on that they were pretty confident there, and Arizona was kind of caught looking around a lot of the time, yeah. and that's another thing, too, that – they just kind of were looking around. They were not really um, – they were – that that entire part was just frustrating. And, again, here, like I said, I'm – you know, I've been a big Caleb Love guy this year, but I'm also, you know, I'll take this one on the chin. Yeah. With Caleb Love, the one thing about him is – and what Tommy, I, I don't think, ever really did is Tommy never got him to become a player that attacked the hoop. Because when Caleb Love attacks the hoop, that's yeah. when everything becomes a little bit easier for him. He was just kind of shooting threes. And again, the thing I'm going to keep going back to is that Arizona, when they had that capacity to be able to get uh, them into the double bonus... Yep. Not only did they get, not only did they decide we are not going to do that, we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep shooting threes. Yeah, and you had a nine-minute stretch in the double bonus to your point where you could just go and attack the basket. Because every time Bala was getting the ball, for the most part, it worked. Mm -hmm. Johnson was not, I thought, as engaged as he could have been in terms of just getting some easier looks. But, yeah, I mean, Arizona completely shot themselves in the foot. And the thing about it, too, is during that stretch, Clemson was without their best player because right. P.J. Hall did have three fouls. Right. So a number of different op of opportunities for Arizona – they trailed by 10. They trailed the majority of this game. And even though they got it close, you know, there were stretches where it was a one possession game, right. a two possession game. It never felt that close. And I think that's what's so crazy about it. And when you look at the stat sheet and what, what happened here, you know, Arizona had more rebounds. They had more points in the paint, more second chance points, more fast break points, more steals, more blocks and less turnovers than Clemson which tells you they have the advantage about pretty much everywhere on the basketball court. Shooting, right. defense, inside. With all that said, you still lose this game. That tells me this team wasn't engaged. Yeah, not only was it not engaged, not only was it not engaged, it was also this was also a team though that also felt like going down the stretch they were just they just kind of panicked. They just started shooting threes. The only one that really wanted it was Jaden Bradley and I think yeah. again that's a little bit of an issue is that the well, Jaden Bradley is the only one that wanted it. That's kind of the issue there, and I don't really see I don't really see what the uh, what the end plan was for Arizona. And now looking at uh, looking at these stats, though, again, people will be saying that uh, well, you know, uh, you can't win without guys shooting threes, or, or you know, with guys just jacking up threes. I get all or I get all of that, but listen, when your perimeter of Boswell, Bradley, and Pella were awful, that just is what it is. You're not going to yeah. win that game, and I thought. It's on to the coach at that point to switch something up, and that just wasn't the case. Yeah, I mean, th this game today, a lot a lot of Stanford-type vibes where you, you don't have anything from your guard play. Clemson's doing just enough. They have a really good game plan. You can tell from an IQ standpoint, those players are smart. They knew what they were doing. They picked their spots. And, you know, you got to give them the advantage when it comes to that because they did a good job of exploiting what Arizona was giving them. And, and Arizona just couldn't take advantage of it they had opportunities time after time after time and you just couldn't make it happen and I think that's what really is the concerning part because you have the talent you have the advantage you're in a spot where you've had a really nice draw when it comes to the tournament in terms of who you played your path to success this year and 
I just keep going back to the engagement. It just didn't feel like it was there. Love was taking shots. He was missing everything. And from there, nobody else could really step up. And, you know, you said it earlier in the season, Mike, this team is going to go as far as Caleb Love takes them. Yeah. And let's be honest here. That's what happened today. Yeah, no, it, that, that's just what happened today. And that's not only was that what happened today. It's also a spot where, you know, it just it just didn't look like they were. It just didn't look like this was a moment they embraced. And I thought that would be a moment he embraced. He's gotten to North Carolina to a final four in the past. And but again, he kind of he laid an egg. There's no other way to really put it. The other yeah. thing that I thought was fascinating about this game, and I think that was uh, incredibly frustrating from a uh, from that perspective too, is that Clemson, whenever Clemson had the ball for 15 seconds, they got whatever they wanted yeah. from a three point shot to a, a three point or a, a free throw to a three point shot to in the lane. They got what absolutely whatever they wanted, Ben. Yeah, they did. And I think that's what was really, really concerning from the get-go is because we've talked about Arizona when they can what they can do defensively. Yeah, they've had their stretches where from the perimeter they, they've given up more threes than they need to in, in, in games. But defensively, this has been a top ten team for the right. last month and a half at least. And all the guards were getting lost. It seemed like especially Pella Larson stood out. I mean, it seemed like every time they switched, Clemson was doing a lot of that. It would just lead to an easy look for Clemson, whether that was at the basket, whether that was from three. There wasn't really the contention there that you needed from Arizona to slow them down. And again, you go back to their game plan. Obviously, I think when you look at what Arizona was going to do, you knew what Hall was going to do. From a matchup standpoint, it's not so great. Obviously, they were going to try to pull Bala away from the basket, which they were successful a lot of times at doing. But when Hunter is 18, right. when your other guard for Clemson has 14, when they're getting such good looks. Well, that, and, that, Ben, that's the other thing, too, is that these were good looks. And yeah. again, Chase Hunter's a good basketball player. There's no way around it. Chase Hunter is a good basketball player. But, but you also can't have him be – he essentially looked like Kyrie but Irving Arizona at times. Can, yeah, right. Chase Hunter can't take you off the dribble. Right. Which is what was happening the entire second half. And Arizona just couldn't find a way to respond. I mean, I keep going back to guard play. We talk about it. We talked about it before this game. We talked about it after Dayton. What wins you games, what loses you games in March, it's your guard play. And your guard play sucked today. Right, exactly. And again, that's where that's where it was. Guard play sucked. You can't really get around it. Now, listen, here's where we're at with, with Tommy Lloyd. I, listen, I'm frustrated with Tommy Lloyd and, you know, some of this, obviously. But at the same time, this is still the guy that I'm more than comfortable with being the head coach. He's obviously got to figure some things out. There's got to be a little bit more accountability in place. Obviously, um, there's some things that are just not quite good enough. Um Listen, uh, and, and you know, I think that comes to, come tournament time, this team just quite frankly hasn't been good enough. we got a couple super snaps coming in. Yeah. Short bus, my guy, what? short bus, just sending my love. I know a good therapist if you all need one. No, we're not ASU fans. We don't need to go to a reliable therapist. And uh, let's see, BAB, this is a great point. Played Crease too much last year, played Boswell too much this year. History repeats. Tommy's got to show that he's able to make tough decisions, Ben One White. That's uh, that's going to be something that he's going to be able to need going forward. Look, and it, We've talked about Boswell. We've talked about the situation. Did play 21 minutes tonight. But as a whole, I'm not going to point to that being the reason they lost. Yeah, Boswell needed to play better. But I thought Lloyd was pretty engaged and pretty good about pulling him and getting Bradley in there when they needed to. Bradley got in there at the right spots. K.J. Lewis got in there at the right spots. But I think the thing you have to take away from all that is as good as those players have been and how much of a spark they provided in key pivotal moments – those two can only get you so far in a game where Clemson's shooting lights out from the perimeter and, and nobody on the team's defending. Right, right, nope, right. And and, and 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 that's what it comes down to. The defense was poor. Love, while he had 13, was horrific from the outside. You need Caleb Love to keep you dangerous, keep other teams on their toes. And there was kind of a point, too, in there in the second half where they were guarding Love, but they weren't necessarily pressed up against him or worried about him hitting the shot because you could tell the confidence wasn't there. It wasn't going in. And these weren't close shots either, Mike. Right. I think that's the well, crazy that's the thing other about thing. it, too. These shots weren't that Ben and I were watching. Granted, we didn't have the greatest view, but these weren't exactly close shots. But, you know, one thing that I think we can also agree on, though, Ben, is the BetMGM Sportsbook app. That's one thing that we know that uh, Ben One White and the BetMGM Sportsbook app, these are fantastic options. Sign up for BetMGM. Use bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least $10. You will receive 1,500 bonus bets if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for details. Go against anything I say because I am not good at this. Maybe I can get you some money by going in the opposite direction. The BetMGM Sportsbook app. Let's hear Shane with a disclaimer. 
Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA. 1-800-981-0023 Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. All right, now that's uh, that very, very good stuff. Now let's talk about uh, let's <laughs> let's talk about uh, this team, this program, and where it's going forward. Listen, Lloyd obviously has a style of play; he's recruiting well. But you're also going into a conference now where you've got some. Big, this is a big boy conference you're going into. This isn't the Pac-12. You're going to have to have dogs. And one thing that I think that we saw is that when you have do- when you have dogs, you know you've got a couple on this team. K.J. Lewis, Jaden Bradley are dogs. These are guys that embrace the moment. These are guys that want the big moment. This is something that Arizona is going to have to re- freely embrace going forward, Ben, because Jaden Bradley, to me, has to be that dude. He was the only one out there that really wanted it. Not only was he the only one out there that really wanted it, he was the one that you're like, all right, we can build on him. We can build on his toughness. Well, and you start having the conversation, too, with him and, and, and what – it looks like going forward for Boswell. If he's going to be even be here at Arizona, what his role is, because I'm sorry, man. I know the kid's young. I know he can do some good things when he's at his best, but the last two months, the bad has outweighed the good. Right. I mean, that's just the reality of it. I mean, when you look at his game log, when you look at what he's done the last few games, the 20 point game is there. I get it in the first round of the tournament, but before that four points, three points, right. seven points, just the inconsistency is, is there. And, you know, you're going to go as far as your point guard takes you. And when you don't have a good foundation, I think, as a number one, I get that it worked out in a way that Bradley can come off the bench and he's probably a lot better and came along further than I think this program expected. Yeah. And they needed that. No doubt. That's all good. We're not disputing any of that. But when you're going to be a team that's contending for a Final Four, for an Elite Eight, there can't be any questions or I guess gray area to your point guard spot. You have to have a solid guy. You have to have a guy who you can rely on to score, to defend, and consistently be there. And Boswell has shown at times he can do that. But the problem is when you're not consistent, it doesn't matter in March. And you know what it is, too? And, and again, I don't want to beat up the kid. I know he's 18. I get all of that. But at some point, you also just got to say that he wasn't good enough this year. And when I say he wasn't good enough, again, that's nothing personal. I'm sure he's a great kid. But he was not good enough. He did not. Like the shots he was taking today, the air ball to start the game, and then the four or five, that's just that's just not going to cut it. Again, yeah. Caleb Love, Pella Larson were absolutely terrible. Totally get that. They're moving on. So there is that. But if, if I'm looking at this point guard spot, I can't have a point guard coming back that doesn't want to shoot the ball and is essentially yeah. a huge liability out there. And that's exactly what that's basically exactly what the case was out there. Yeah, and not only does he not want to shoot the ball, teams know he's not going to shoot the ball. Right. And I think that's the big concerning part about it is because defensively your opponent, that's a big weight off their shoulders taken, knowing that all they have to do is is stop Arizona really from the basket and limit love. And that's all they had to do. Clemson, look, they didn't have the athleticism. They didn't really have the size. Paul's uh, Paul, Hall's your best guy down low. But outside of that, I mean, who was going to stop Balo and Johnson if Arizona attacked the basket? And, you know, we keep beating a dead horse with it. But this game was lost in that nine minute stretch where. The double bonus occurred. You had the opportunity to go inside low and, and take advantage of that when Hall wasn't in the game, and they didn't do that. Right. You know, I think you know we kind of joked at that mark, and we said Arizona shouldn't shoot a three, and in a weird way, we were kind of serious because it wasn't falling. You couldn't right. rely on your guards, and you needed Johnson and Balo to take over the game, and that just didn't happen. All right, now we're going to get to Terrence Wilmore, the great T.J. Wilmore, who knows a lot more than I know about anything in life. Now, let's talk about, first of all, the AZ Lotto. All right, Arizona Lottery. Arizona Lottery. The Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's also about giving back to the state and the communities, just like Ben One White is. Ben One White, this is true. This is true. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Again, AZ Lotto. Ben, have you ever won the AZ Lotto? Be honest with me if you have. If I did, you wouldn't know. All right. You know what? That's because he's a modest man, just like the Arizona Lottery. Check it out. All right. Terrence Wilmore, great point. Need more NBA guys on the roster and get all three current guards out to make way for the end. You're not an elite level team if that's what your guards do in pressure moments. Yep. Yeah. Your mouth to God's ears. That's really kind of what it is. You're If that's really the case, then, you know, it is. Now, you got players coming in. We're going to have all offseason to talk about that NBA type guys. But at the same time, Ben One White. 
that's also that's a good point. If you're an NBA, if you're a uh, point, if you're a starting point guard at the U of A, you should probably be somebody that the NBA people have a radar on. If you're a shooting guard, a small forward, that should be the case as well. We got Jamari Phillips, we got Joe Song, we got Carter Bryant. We got all off season to talk about that. Yeah. We got KJ Lewis, my friend, but. Again, it's just kind of frustrating, Ben, because, you know, in Arizona, you're yeah. expected to have this kind of talent. Yeah, you are. And, and, and look, we, we talked about it a minute ago. When, when it comes to the tournament, when you go this deep in it, tell me a team over the last, you know, five, ten years that has won a national title where they just have a big question mark. Right. right. Where they have inconsistency at point guard. You watch UConn. You watch some of these teams. They're not worried about what their point guard's doing because they know they can rely on them. They know what they're going to bring to the table game in and game out. And, you know... Boswell, obviously, maybe different time, different place. You know, right. it would have been different. But whether it was age, whether it was not being ready, or whether it was just simply, you know, an evaluation thing and that, you know, he's just not quite good enough. It, right. just, it never worked out. You know, you worried about Arizona's ability come stretch time because you knew that was a lingering question since Jan- since really the Duke game. Because right. from an impact standpoint, has he had good games and good stretches? Yeah. But you need a difference maker. You need a guy who's going to make an impact. You have to be able to look at your point guard and say, okay, this guy can be the reason we win and come over the hump. And today was a perfect opportunity to show that because Love was struggling. He's obviously a two. Balo, while I think did good things when he got the ball, he certainly wasn't involved enough, I thought. So who you got to turn to? You got to turn to your point guard. And it wasn't Boswell out there on the floor, Mike, keeping Arizona in this game. It was Jaden Bradley. What My problem, though, too, was that when Arizona went inside, when Arizona went to Umar Ballo, leader of men, went to uh, the, uh, the high post with Keyshawn Johnson, there was – they were generally successful and they generally got away from it now a big problem was is that umar Vallo did not want any part of those three of uh, those free throws you and i were watching it he was yeah. one of seven it felt like he could have gone one of a thousand and it was not going to, they, those shots were not going to go in i uh that obviously was an issue yeah. um you're going to have a roster overhaul this season there's no or this off season and honestly it's probably for a good thing I think that they were uh, – listen, I think that it was it, – this was certainly better than last year's team. I get that. But let's be honest here. This was a disappointing – this was a disappointing overall performance. Very, very. Joseph, I'll uh, – I, I, you know, we aren't even sniffing this. That's the point is, you know, Caleb Love obviously was not good. Totally get it. He was an F. But – who else? I mean, are you saying that you know Paolo was the one that could have uh, taken us to the promised land? I don't. Yeah. I don't. And, I don't see that. And people want to beat up on Pella. Look, he he did not have a great game, especially defensively. I mean, there were just so many missed opportunities and screens and switches that went horribly for him. And Arizona gave up some really easy baskets, but they shouldn't have. I mean, we're not disputing any of that. But the difference here is your guards couldn't get anything going off. Right, right. Love could not make a shot from the perimeter, quite literally, 0 for 9, as we've talked right. about a number of different times on this show so far. Boswell, you couldn't trust him in those moments. Bradley came in. He did what he could. He had 18 points. He was terrific. I thought he gave Arizona a spark on, on both ends of the floor. But, again, this game is won, won and lost in March with your guards. Arizona's guard play, and Arizona's best player – was not good enough today. I yeah. mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, you know, look, Tommy's left nut in the chat here is blown up about the whole thing. Yeah, let's with, get let's get it, to, let's get it, to it, that. It, it's a valid point. It's a valid point, right? Because I thought that putting Johnson on Hall was a nice thought early in this game, right? Because you kind of think, okay, we'll let Hall go off and get his. But at the same time, with the way the game played out from the get-go, Clemson's guards were going to make shots. They were scoring points, and at that point, I would have liked to seen Lloyd make that adjustment, but it was kind of too late by the time they did that. Yeah, it was too late to make that point. And again, I don't understand too, and this is still, and again, we appreciate all the compliment or, you know, the, the listen, <laughs> as Arizona fans, this is what we sign up for. We wouldn't trade it for anything, obviously. Dennis Walsh, uh, super snap, Dennis Walsh. Mike, thanks for all the hard work analysis and good humor. You make the back the A experience 100 times better. That's what we try to do around here. But let's get to uh, TLN. TLN, all right. TLN, we're going to talk about this. We're going to read it because TLN is in every stat, every chat, and we very much appreciate TLN. I will post this a million times until it's acknowledged. Tommy is horrible. Why the hell was Ballo not guarding Hall? It created a mismatch in Clemson's favor. Why the hell were we – there are so many threes. I can't argue with it. 
Yeah. Everything you said, except for the for the second sentence, I agree with. Listen, he's not horrible. He's obviously got to make some real adjustments, though. There's no yeah. doubt about that. You've got to make some adjustments. I don't, you know, I'm, you're not going to get that dispute from me. Yeah. But at the same time, at the same time, I also think that it's fair to say that um, he's still, again, this is third year coaching. I get all that. Nobody wants to hear that excuse. I get it. I get all of that. But at the same time, he's recruiting well. He's winning games. He's also got to get a little bit of a tougher side. I don't think that they're, you know, I'm not really breaking any news there. He's got to get yeah. a little bit of a tougher side. You got to be able to pull guys and not play guys when they're playing well. It feels yeah. like, you know, with this well, team especially, it felt like there were a lot of charity minutes that were going around that I just don't get. Right. And, and I'm just using this as an example. I don't want to bash Boswell per se, but when you talk about toughness and when you talk about accountability, uh, we, we all know there have been some issues with him throughout the season from a behavioral standpoint. Vegas is no secret. You've all seen the pictures. Right. And, you know, I put it out there and we've talked about the fact that, you know, maybe you make that adjustment where you put Bradley in that starting lineup just to send a message. Right. Right. Because the way this team is constructed you know, you're going to be switching a lot of pieces. So the starters don't really matter per se, but I just thought that message was never sent. Yeah. And it's not Lloyd's fault entirely, but I'm sorry, man. When when you're in the Pac-12 tournament, and granted, look, how much does it mean for the NCAA tournament? That's another conversation. But when you're in March, when you're on just the tip of being in the NCAA tournament and that about, about to start, you got to be focused. You can't be messing around. And I just thought that, that maybe had a cloud over this team with the way that things have gone the last couple of months. And, you know, it, it shows, right? I think there's another interesting point here when you look at, um, forget the individual that said it, but we talked about this season in terms of success failure. And I think this individual says this season is a failure because in their mind, Arizona's worse on March 28th than they were in late November. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, I, I, you know, like I said, I love Tommy Lloyd. I try to stay optimistic, but I can't really argue with that. I, yeah. I, I think it's, I think I, it's hard to, I think it's hard to make the case. By the way, my phone is going crazy because I left the text open, so it's just like it's repeating all of this stuff. So I do not like this, but I can't really make that. I can't really make that argument, Ben. Um, this was a, this team was this team was not as good two months later as they were now, and you know, yeah. uh, I. I there were obviously some warning signs in play. They didn't play. We're playing well in the Pac-12 tournament. That was obviously a that was obviously an issue. But I don't know what else. To, I don't know what else to say because that's a great point. Arizona is not as good now as they were two months ago. And for a veteran-laden team, that is an issue. You've got to be better than you were two months ago, and yeah. they just weren't. Quite frankly, Ben. Uh, uh, that's yeah. I mean, that's why we rely on you people out there. You're much smaller. You're much, also, we'll get to Ballo in a second, TLN. That's a great point. I actually, yeah. I have their point of view for what it's worth. Go yeah, ahead, one bite. Big picture, I can't say that's wrong. I get why that's the perspective. I totally get that. I think the way I would answer that is I think your point guard spot, spot is significantly worse than it was three months ago. Right. And that's arguably your most important player on the court. Right. right. And when that's the case, it trickles into everything defense perimeter defense how many times have we talked about how arizona gives up way too many threes plays down to their competition to teams who normally don't even shoot well right right clemson is not a lights out shooting team by any means they've gotten hot at the right time in the tournament i'll give them that they had a really good game plan today but outside of hall there's absolutely no excuse and no reason why anybody on this clemson team should be beating Arizona in the fashion they did today. It yeah, comes that, down to that. that's what it is. Because again, this isn't a team. We're talking about Arizona with NBA players and not having NBA players, whatever you want to say. Guess what? Clemson didn't have NBA players either. And Clemson just looked. And what was I think was also kind of frustrating about this game is that Clemson looked like they had a pretty good idea of what was going to, you know, what they wanted. They scouted Arizona They good. scouted yeah. Arizona very well, and I think that was also what was very frustrating, is that it felt like they had a better game plan against Arizona. They got better shots than Arizona got, Ben One White. They did. They got really, really good shots, and, and that's the crazy part about it. I mean, there were so many gimmies there towards the end, especially where they were inbounding the ball, uh, Clemson, and there wasn't an Arizona defender in sight. And it just led to easy layup after easy layup. I think back to that one-minute stretch to go where, you know, Bradley essentially ties the game and Clemson takes the ball down the court. I believe there's a foul called. They inbound the ball. And and, and right away, it's back to a four-point game, five-point right. game. And Arizona just 
as, as much as they would find opportunities to put themselves back in it in the second half, within 20 seconds, they were out of the game again. Right. Right. And I think that comes down to defense. I think that comes down to game planning and, and coaching. Right. Right. I think that's the big thing here, because when you don't have love playing well, your coaching's got to be top of the line, man. You got to be locked in on both ends of the floor. You can't be giving up easy baskets. Did Arizona try to press them and, and do good things right. and, and slow things down a little bit and rattle Clemson at the times they did. Right. And it led to some forced turnovers. But as a result, Arizona just wasn't able to take advantage when they were able to force the ball over, right? Uh, force the ball and, and get those easy looks. How many wide open looks did they miss at the rim? How many opportunities where, whether it was Love, even Bradley, I know he played well, but anybody at the guard spot would just get the ball and stand around in the perimeter, and Arizona right. had a wide open look to, to Balo or Crevis or even Johnson, and All they right. just didn't take advantage one, of that. One thing I got to say here, and this is me uh, rearing my uh, back the A mentality. All the ASU dorks that are tweeting at me, dude, <laughs> I'm just going to say this once. You are literally going into the worst bas- or the best basketball conference in the country, and you're going to win two games next year. Basketball stinks. Football stinks. Uh, listen, man, we, we can take care of our own in here. We don't need any help from ASU people. Um, I will just leave you on that note. And uh, Tommy, uh, John Hippensteel, by the way, I love that name, John Hippensteel. Very good name. Um, that, uh, Ben, that sound, anybody named John Hippensteel is successful in life. Agreed. There is yes. no way that uh, John Hippensteel is not successful in life. Now, let's talk a little bit, though, about, uh, I th- you know, that's a fair point. Yeah. I think it's a fair point because with Caleb Love, like I said, I like Caleb Love. Um, I like Caleb Love a lot. But at the same time, it felt like Tommy never was able to tell him that you need to get to the hoop a little bit more. You need to be able to do this. And right. it just felt and, like it was kind of the same thing. And I thought he put him in some bad spots because there were times where you saw love just look absolutely rattled right. and just completely just broken down. The nerves were there. You could tell. And the one thing I'll give Clemson, too, is you know they took very strategic timeouts. Right. And I didn't see a lot of that from Arizona. It was very much to the point here let it rip let's let the game flow let's see what happens but when it's yeah. an eight point game a 10 point game a 12 point game and then you cut it back a little bit closer that's not the look you want to see especially when clemson's making as many easy shots as they did so i would have liked to see arizona control the pace a little bit better yeah you know take some more timeouts get love to settle down because we know he's more than capable of taking and making those shots right and it just didn't seem like that was the case he looked pretty uncomfortable. Clemson did a really good job of making him uncomfortable the entire game, and as a result, it trickled down to the rest of the team. Yeah. All right. Now let's uh, let's look at some of these. Um, you know, Arizona fans obviously were were bummed about this, uh, and this is again. Uh, Sean makes a great point. This is two straight years that Tommy was out schemed. Listen, you yeah. look at the shots that Clemson got. You look at the shots that Arizona got. One of these shots was a lot easier than the other shots. Period. Point blank. There's no other way. As the kids would say, full stop. Yeah. That's just kind of the uh, um, that's just kind of that's just kind of the way it is. Now, Matt Weinbaum right here. Let's uh, let's hear from Matt Weinbaum. OK, now, why do we keep choking? Arizona has now lost uh, lost to a team seated at least four spots below them in each game of their last four. I, yeah, that's that's the question, man. Yeah. Um, that's uh, I don't know that there's really any other way to put it. That's that's the question that I think a lot of people um, would like to know because again, Clemson's shots were easier than Arizona's shots. And uh, let's see here. I think it was TLN that asked this. Here was what Arizona's idea was when it came to. Uh, here's what Arizona's idea was when it came to uh, PJ Hall and Keyshawn John. Or and I don't think that they believed that they could guard that they could cover. Uh, I don't think they believed that they could cover. They did uh, uh, Hall, uh, Hall with all. Ballo because he was just going to kill him from the perimeter. So that's yeah. where they went with Keyshawn. But I think the one thing about it that was a little bit disconcerting was that there was really no adjustment at that point. Then yeah. there was no, OK, well, this isn't working either. Let's go ahead and do this. There was really none of that. And I think that's what's frustrating about this is that there was none of that, Ben. And um, I think that the the ability of Arizona to be able to. Yeah, the ability of Arizona to be able to you know, um, be able to adjust on the fly. That's something that I think Tommy Lloyd certainly has to work with. Well, and when you look at it, it's a five point game. The shooting's not good. The defense isn't good. And when love is struggling the way he is and and the other guards outside of Bradley, you kind of feel like at that point in the second half, there's only so much you can do. 
But to your point, the one thing you can control, the one thing you can do is make that adjustment, right? Slow haul down, get easy looks at the basket, get the ball to Ballo. But the problem, as we know with that too, and I get it, is it's going to get fouled. And when he gets fouled, he's not going to make his free throws. Right. So it's kind of a catch-22 with that. But, yeah, Arizona was just one thing away. If they would have corrected one thing, I think they squeeze out. You don't feel great about it, but – a couple of more threes, right. right? Maybe going to Balo a little bit earlier on a haul because he was in foul trouble in the double bonus, attacking the rim, right? Trying to get to the lane. And I'm sorry if it's not Balo or Johnson, it's got to be Love right. or somebody in the guard spot. Right. You have no excuse and no reason why you couldn't get to the rim and get more easy points. Yep, there is no they, And they just didn't do it. We got Saul Bookman coming up here in a second. But first, uh, let's see here. What do we want to get to? You know what I think there was? You know what I think I noticed early on, Ben? It didn't feel like these guys went to Circle K. Clearly I, I not. I don't know for a fact they went, didn't go to Circle K. All right, this is getting annoying, the Sun Devil thing. Um, Circle K. Join Inner Circle for free by downloading the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. Again, Ben, I went to Circle K earlier today. I don't know if the team went, and I think that we could maybe maybe uh, chalk some of that up to maybe not going to Circle K. Who knows? But I don't know that that's not necessarily the case. Guess who we have? The GM, the boss, the big dog, the man, Saul Book. What's your middle name, Saul? All right, we got Saul. We're working. Uh, ben just cut me out of here, though, by the way. All, All right, right hey so guys. I can't hear anything, but <laughs> Saul can hear. All right, Saul, thoughts? Uh, I mean, I want to say this is just something we're all used to, but man, it just it still hurts each and every time, you know. Right. Uh, that's that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Uh, sitting there courtside, I had a different perspective than I think what I was seeing on Twitter. I just listen, man. I I, I didn't think U of A played bad. I just thought that they couldn't hit shots for anything. Right. You know, and yeah, they had a couple breakdowns at the end of the game, which is unfortunate. But I thought overall they they tied it up several times, had a chance to win this game. They just I you got to credit Clemson. They hit big shots. Uh, and every time they, we made a run, they answered. And you can't hate them for that. Like, I, everybody's, you know, I, I, I see everybody hating Tommy and, you know, oh, we got to fire him. Well, first of all, uh, you, you be careful what you wish for because, yeah, you've got lucky with two other coaches right. and Sean Miller and, and now Tommy. There are Kevin O'Neill's out there. I tell you what, there's Bobby Hurley's out there too. You know what I mean? So I just, listen, he, I, I just got out of the press conference and, and he's walking by me as I'm about to hit the elevator right now. And we caught eyes. And he looked at me and he just kind of shook his head. He was just like, and, he, and you, you could tell he was upset. And he just right. said, it just wasn't our night, you know, right. like, and you could see that he was frustrated. And, oh, man, that just what? fucking hurts. I, I, <laughs> it never gets what, easy. The thing that I didn't understand, and granted, when you're the boss, you get to sit court sign as you deserve to. But, Saul, the one thing I didn't get is this. Arizona gets Clemson into the bonus with about 11 minutes left, and they kept shooting threes no, that yeah. weren't going in. How in the world are you not attacking so, the basket? So the, the head coach of Clemson, oh, I forget what his name is. Brunell. Yeah, yeah, yeah Brunell. He said that they had to go zone because – Arizona was forcing contact. Mm -hmm. They had to go zone. They backed into the key uh, and wanted to force Arizona to shoot threes. Right. Because they hadn't hit any. Right. Yep. So, like, I mean, it, they they were open shots, guys. That's like that's all I gotta say. It's not like they, you know, Caleb Love sh threw one footer in the first half <laughs> that I was like, "What are you doing?" But outside of that, right. they were wide open shots. They were quality shots. They just couldn't hit. You, you know what? Here's what it comes down to. And Ben and I were talking about this. Kylan Boswell, Caleb Love, and Pella Larson all had bad games. Yeah, You're not winning those games. If you all play, I, I think the stat was, I don't have it in front of me now, but something like 5 of 29. If those three guys go 5 of 29, guess what? You're not winning that game. Now, you could say, well, we need more out of that. You're probably right. But at the same time, if you go 5 of 29, that's just not – you're not winning that game, man. Yeah, yeah you're, you're not. I just – again, I could they have gone down low a little bit more than they did? Sure. They, they could have. Um, but they were trying to drive. Mm -hmm. There were several times where they tried to drive, and every single time Clemson would try to throw doubles or, or they would they would double up the guy that was penetrating. Um, so you have to kick it out because that's the right basketball play, right? Like you can't train these guys to play differently than they have all season just because they're not hitting shots from the outside. You got to shoot them. And maybe you're looking for better shooters next year, obviously, but, man, it was – 
All right. It, it was tough. All right. Again, I'm going to say this one more time for the ASU people that are in here. Dude, you guys go, You guys okay, are. Can I, can I say something? Of course. I'd love for you to. Listen, uh, ASU has absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing to add to this conversation. They're the most pathetic program in all of sports. They can't win anything, and their only saving grace is to watch us who continually flirt with success right. fall on our face. Right. That's all they have. Right. If we win a national championship or we get to a Final Four, like what happened in 97, they got nothing to say. Yeah, nothing. You know what I mean? And they, so all they can do is just revel in everybody else's misery because they have their own misery that they have to deal with constantly, and they have a whole school and a president that doesn't care about them athletically at all. So they've basically given up hope, and they're seeking all their hopes into us Losing. All right. That's it. All right. We got a super snap here, a very generous super snap, a $50 super snap. Appreciate all your coverage throughout the year. Sad year and disappointed, but, we, uh, but we'll back the A still. That's the key, man. I put this out on Twitter and I actually got a actually got a surprising amount, Ben, but you saw it when I said this is still the life we've chosen. Yes. You know, and I would yeah. here. I know we're all we're all heartbroken right now, but I would not change. I would not trade this for anything. No. Being an Arizona fan kicks ass. Period. That's that's the best way I can put it. <laughs> man, it's man, it's it's like I, I, man, I don't know what the best way to say it. It's like it's like dating somebody that you think, man, this is gonna this is really going somewhere, and you're like really feeling it. Yeah. And then like someday, one day, she's just like, uh, I, I think I, I want to go somewhere else. Yep. And then yeah. you're just like, what? And you've never once contemplated that she might go somewhere yes. else. Yeah. So you're yes. totally taken you're, aback you're by it. Devastated. We were all yeah. confident going into this game. And, you know, it's well, just, you know. I said if. I kept yeah. saying if because you just, yeah. we've seen this too many times where a team, like we said, if Clemson played a really good game. And what did I say was the one key to this game? Hmm. Chase Hunter. Yeah. I said if Chase Hunter played a good game, yep. Clemson's going to be right there. Yep. And yep. damn it, if Clemson, Chase Hunter had one of his best games of the season, he played so in control. I was really impressed by him tonight. He was just, he was the dog out there. You know what? Uh, you know what also bothered me a little bit about this game, though, is that it felt like Clemson was getting good looks throughout the game. They were, when they got into the paint, Chase Hunter was getting kind of, he got, he was getting the mid range, he was getting the open three. It just felt like he was. A, they were getting good looks. It felt like it, and it didn't really stop. It felt like if they worked it around, they were going to get good looks. They also got a lot of bounces. There were some bounces tonight that I was just like, "You got to be kidding the me!" Bank the bank three head on from three, yeah. the the shot. So from my vantage point, Shefflin threw a shot up, and it hit the left side of the rim, and I was like, "Oh, it's going to bounce off left." Right. And then it, it had this weird spin to it, bounced off the glass and went in. And I'm like. It's that kind of night. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it was just, it's one of those, it's one of those nights. I think we're also finding out too, that the ACC is actually, I, th I mean, the ACC yeah, is legit. really, really good. Between, hey, Clemson might join the Big between, 12 Duke, between Duke, North Carolina, between all of those, you know, between all those schools. Oh, my bad, dude. I apologize. Um, the, uh, you know, it's obviously, it's obviously a really good team. Now, Looking, it's going to be interesting to see because you're you're going to, and again, nobody I know really wants to talk about next year, but we're going to talk about next year a little bit because this year is still over. And again, you're going to you got a whole new animal now, guys, that you're about to embark on. You're going into a you're going into a conference that is not loaded with Oregon States and Cal's and Stanford's. Guess what? Your off your off night is going to be playing a Kansas State or a TCU, which yeah. are tournament level teams. Now. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Arizona fans, you're going to drop more games. There's no there's no what there's no way to put it. You're yeah. going to drop more games. So don't panic and try to fire Tommy after every single loss. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the hope fellas is that you're also a little bit more battle tested when you go into those games because there is no games that you can take off. There's no I can bring my C performance and get by Stanford or Cal yeah. or whatever because guess what? You bring your C performance for your K-State fellas. Guess oh, yeah. what? Yeah. You're not going to probably win that game, guys. So I'm cool with that in that aspect for sure. I, go ahead, Ben. Well, and, and to that point, there's no sleepwalking, right? So you talk about the struggles at point guard. You talk about the sleepwalking at Stanford and Oregon State in some of these games. You can't have that. But, I mean, to Saul's point, when, when all this happens, it's really hard to win a game, right? You can't make a shot. seems like you couldn't stop a shot, even when you got some de decent defense on Clemson's guards. It just didn't seem to matter. And when you have a combination of all these things go wrong in one night, this is what happens. I mean, we've talked about those three, Boswell, Larson, and Love. And when you got all three guys just 
playing complete flat games, it's just not going to happen. I don't care if it's the first round. I don't care if it's the Sweet 16. Yeah, but, it's it's if you look at the stats, it's it's unbelievable that if you looked at those stats normally and you didn't know what the final score was, you would think that Arizona won. Right. It might not have been a big win, but you thought they right. dominated the boards, they dominated yeah. the paint, right. they dominated fast point uh, break points. Like yeah. it was all there except the threes, and the threes yeah. is the e- the ultimate equalizer when another team hits three or four times as many as you do. It that's a problem, and Arizona going in the next year definitely is going to need a more consistent three point shooter that yes. they can rely on no for sure. Um, but I, I also because I didn't get a chance to earlier. I, I don't know if I've ever loved a player more than Jaden Bradley. No I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I saw this kid. There, there was this look in his eyes that was just – he was just totally confident out yeah, there. Yeah, he yeah. was forcing the issue. He, that that one three he hit, yeah. as soon as he released it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know, cut it to two. Like, he was a dog. He carried the whole team on his back in yeah. that second half. Without Jaden Bradley, Arizona loses by 20. Yeah, yeah. And, I'll, and I'll be honest here. This is something that Arizona is going to have to figure this one out because Jaden Bradley, I can tell you. Oh, on, no. I, 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 I have a, a strong feeling Jaden Bradley ain't coming off the bench next year. I can tell no you. Way. You know There's what? Not a I can tell you with 100% certainty that Jaden Bradley, if he is in an Arizona uniform next season, will only be the uh, in the Arizona uniform if he is the starting point guard. And this is no disrespect to anybody else on the roster. He's not coming back to back up anybody. He is going to be the starting point guard. And if Arizona does not offer that to him, then he's going to have other options. They, they will. They'll offer that to him. I Listen, man, he was clearly the best guard that we've had the second half of the season. Yep. It, that's yeah. undebatable. He won us multiple games. He gets after it. His... His speed, his defense, his effort. His hands are amazing. Are just second to none. It's not even that he's one of the best bench players in the country. I truly believe he's one of the best guards in the country, period, regardless if he comes off the bench or not. And I can't wait to see the growth uh, from from him next year. And and I just – Tommy, listen, Tommy's going to give him the reins, man. He just is. And there's going to be a bunch of freshmen that come into the fold, and it's going to be up to Kylan Boswell on whether or not he wants to be that off guard Right and, or combo guard with him or uh, transfer out, but it, it but Kylan does have that at his disposal. Mm-hmm. He's got to step up his game. He knows he does. It, overall, I'm I'm not worried. It's just you know it, you hate to say that year after year after year after year because it's just it, the same old song, another year. You know who Jane Bradley feels like? He feels like a Kelvin Sampson point guard. Mm-hmm. He feels like yeah. somebody that you would see at the, you you would see at Houston. That you somebody like that that you would see. That you know, in a variety of different angles. Now, one thing, one guy that I do want to uh, give a real shout out to because he left it all in the court was Keyshaw Johnson. Uh, Keyshaw Johnson was, you know, he he started the game out, he played with fire, and he 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 was good. One thing though, uh, one thing though that we I think we need to talk about a little bit, Saul, and you are beating me up on this a little bit in the Pac-12 tournament at the end of the season is that Arizona was not playing good ball going into the NCAA tournament, and that reared its head again. I felt that that kind of it, I, I like playing good ball coming in. They played disinterested against Oregon, SC, and I don't know that that was a reason why, but it certainly was. It looked more of the same to a certain degree. Guys not making shots, all of that. Um, I don't I don't know if they – I mean, I don't know. Listen, guys, we've played all types of ways going into the tournament. We've won the Pac-12 championship, uh, tournament championship, three or four different times, and it felt the vibes were high. Hell, in 2017, we beat – two top five ranked teams in the Pac-12 tournament, we get to the tournament, and guess what? We lost the right. 316 of the Xavier. It, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. you got to get you got to get to the tournament and play well, whether you've been playing poorly or good heading into it. When you look at Caleb Love shooting, he, it's not like he was bad tonight. He's been bad for three straight games from the perimeter in the tournament. Right. Yeah. That was a trend. And, uh, guys, I will tell you this right now. Watching Caleb Love and Colin Boswell yesterday, I saw them shoot – a lot of threes. Mm-hmm. I saw them miss a lot of threes. Yeah. They just were not in sync. Right. They just didn't have it. And Caleb, the reason why we love Caleb is because he has no conscience. Right. He's not afraid to take the big shot. Unfortunately, it didn't fall for him tonight. Yeah. And this is the result. All right. Now, let's get to the Desert Financial Credit Union by the numbers. By the numbers, guys. By the way, Saul Bookman, the great Saul Bookman, does not have his glasses on. We need you to write in very, very big font for Saul Bookman. (laughs) All right. Here's the Desert Financial Credit Union by the numbers. But first... 
This segment is brought to you by Desert Financial Credit Union, Arizona's number one credit union named by Forbes. Saul Bookman, you use Desert Financial Credit Union. This is correct. I do. All right. Here's what we got right here. Uh, you shoot 17% from three-point range. That's generally not a good shot, uh, sign. You give up 12, uh, you know, 12 points on the field goal percentage, not a good sign. I think where it was interesting, though, is that you got 10. Uh, you rebounded. You, had, you kind of controlled the paint when you really wanted to control the paint there, guys. Yeah, the only the only thing that was the negative was the second chance opportunities in the second half that Clemson oh. kept getting uh, just inopportune times. It felt like it just felt like every time Arizona was on the cusp of a run, yeah. they would get an offensive rebound and get a score. And it's just that, those are just three minutes. right. And what's what's difficult about something like that too is when you're playing from behind and you guys both and all this. When you're playing from behind, you expend so much energy to be able to get back to where it's tied, and then it's just difficult when you're playing from behind the whole time to really be able to go back and take that lead. And you saw that Arizona was able to get it tied a couple times, and then Clemson came right back with a five-point run something like that guys and that's that you know that's uh that that's always going to be a little bit of an issue um now listen arizona we got all off season to be able to get into this uh arizona's got a top five recruiting class coming in and that's something too that i think people need to understand listen um you know obviously people are frustrated with the loss but tommy lloyd look around college basketball right now he's in his third year as a coach who would you for the next 10 years there's not a lot of guys that you're going to take over Tommy Lloyd. He can, he's still learning, but people, you got to remember too. This is a, he's in his third year as a head coach. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like there is a learning on the job, right? Here. No doubt. And, and everybody, listen, everybody's so quick to make a, a decision. It's not like this team was egregious all year. It's not right. like they were a national championship or Final Four hopeful and then they went in and went like you know 18 and 9 in in the season or anything right, like that yeah. like they're a really good team it's just unfortunate that it falls like this and sometimes it does and you hope that at some point they're going to be able to overcome i truly believe they will at some point and uh, you know as tommy put it uh, i can't wait for that return on my investment right uh, because at some point they're going to be able to cash in and they're going to cash in in a big way and loot had these problems he got to 88 that's cool but after 88, all the way to 94, it was nothing but upset after upset after upset after upset. Right. If we right. were in that day and age, people would be calling for Lute Olsen, one of the Hall of Fame legendary coaches of all time, to be fired if right. this was social media back then. So the program is in a, in a great position. They're, they've got a great culture going on about them, and you can see that in practice. You can see that behind the scenes. You can see that these guys really love each other. They're all about the, the colors. They're all about the school. I'm okay with where we're at. Like right. I, I'd rather lose to a team that balled their ass off yeah. than, a, than us just flub it and them just get fluky, right? right? I thought Clemson played a really good game tonight. Right. Like They played yeah. good basketball. Should we have played like we did in the first 10 minutes? Hell no. Right. Absolutely atrocious. But I still didn't think – we still had a chance to win, and Clemson just – they played a little bit better tonight, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, let's see here. Um, now, you know, that's a good point. Listen, and again, when, when Saul's comparing – Lute's one of the 15 best coaches of all time in college basketball. So, you know, obviously I don't know that Tommy will ever reach that, but I will say that, you know, at some point um, – some point you would your hope they're gonna break they'll break through with some now who's got the most coach uh who's got the most wins as a, as a as a coach in the first three seasons that would be lloyd tommy lloyd that would be tommy lloyd give me kelvin sampson any day please well i prefer kelvin sampson like but Samson. yeah i like kelvin sampson Kelvin more, is his evil twin but keep in mind uh kelvin sampson well i don't know how long he's been coaching but kelvin sampson has been coaching for almost uh 35 years as a head coach so that's something and still one mv or uh, only one uh, uh final four so you got to keep that in mind. Also, one thing I was remiss in, the uh, Desert Financial Credit Union. They have some very, very enticing options for everybody. When you open a free uh, checking account online, you can get $200 in bonuses. Get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200 today. All right. This is it. These are for the people, by the people. Join a credit union that is committed to giving back to the community and sharing success with its members. Look to Desert Financial for checking and savings accounts, mortgage, uh, credit cards, investment options, and more. Desertfinancial.com slash 200. Okay. Now. Um, I don't care. We're going to be flying back tomorrow, I would assume. This is true. 7.25 a.m., baby. All right, man. Well, yeah, I'm totally cool. I'm totally cool with that one. But um, 
I have no interest in this game right now, although it is interesting that if Alabama <laughs> ends up winning this game. But going to. yeah, I kind of feel I kind of get the sense as well. Um, but, you know, it, it, listen, at the end of the day, this was disappointing. I thought that everything was kind of uh, everything was kind of set up for Arizona. And not only was uh, it set up, this was a Clemson team. Arizona is an eight point favorite against um, they hadn't played their great, 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 greatest ball coming into the uh, tournament. Felt like, yeah, really kind of had it set up for you and it didn't work. But sometimes, you know what? Maybe we'll find something where it's just better if you uh, have the tougher road. Because, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's when that's when they've won before, too. I mean, listen, the road doesn't matter. Right. You got to play good. No, right. It doesn't matter who you're playing. So right. Arizona's going to be the favorite in most games. Right. Exactly. They, they, every game is going to be an upset in the tournament from this point forward because they're always, for the most part, they're always going to be the favorite. Right. And so I'd rather be on that side of things and be the heavyweight and, and, and hope to finally break through. And I have a feeling. I have a fe- I have a feeling that once Tommy does break through, I think we're, we'll, it'll be like UConn. Yeah, you know, once they once once Calhoun broke through, yeah. they got a couple. Right, right, and the program has won more cha- but, national championships in the last twenty years right. than Duke, than North Carolina, than Kentucky. Yep. Like some of them all. Time. At some point, that's going to be us. Yes, and by the way, UConn is disgustingly good this year. Yeah. What they do, they just demoralize teams, and that's uh, that's something. By the way, I'm very bummed we don't get to have uh, – oh, by the way, we've got football, though, because we are a football school as well. We are going to be getting hot and heavy into this as well. Ben, all right, guys, let's wrap this one up here. Ben, what are your thoughts? Saul Bookman, and then I will get my last read in. Empire Flooring, that's called a tease. Look, it, it's obviously disappointing. We talked about the shooting woos. Arizona was not able to make a shot. But I'll say this, Clemson's a lot better than people thought. I thought they did a great job scouting Arizona. I thought their game plan was fantastic. And whether it was Hunter or that other guard, they had guys who could make shots. Arizona couldn't make shots. It was a tough day. But I think what was really frustrating is you look at the finish, it was a five-point game. And while Arizona did cut it close at times, they never quite got there to take control. And you always felt like, are they 1-3, maybe 2-3, maybe an adjustment away from tying the game or taking a little bit of a lead and squeezing out of this? And that didn't happen. It was a teaser, but it never happened. And look, these games are tough. It's going to happen. You're going to be playing a good team at this point in the tournament, regardless of if you're a one seed or a two seed. It happens. And look, the future is bright. Tommy Lloyd isn't going anywhere. The caliber of player that Arizona gets is not changing. And with all that being said, I have a hard time believing Arizona is not close next year or at least headed in the right direction. You can't dispute any of that. All right. I just want to say one thing, and I'm going to let the boss have the last word. Actually, no, let me get the read in. I'm going to have the last word. But here's what I think some people need to understand. I get people all the time that will come up to me because I argue with people on Twitter all day. And I get people that will come up to me and talk to me. This is still sports at the end of the day. This is we are we are fortunate enough to be working in the toy section of society, which is a very, very nice place to play. So, again, people, you don't need to get personal with each other. Again, this is just sports. All right. Now, Saul Bookman, let me tell you first about Empire Flooring, and then you're going to have the uh, you are going to have the pedestal as you so deserve. But first, Empire Flooring. Saul Bookman, you have great floors. Yes, I do. You do. That uh, let's let's be honest here. Very, very good floors that Saul Bookman has. And Empire Flooring, I'm sure, had a little bit of a hand in that. Here's the deal. Schedule a free in home estimate today. All listeners can receive a $350 off discount when they use promo code PHNX. Restrictions apply. See EmpireToday.com slash PHNX for details. Ben White has floors that are very good, but they could be even better. We are going to try to work with Empire to get Ben White new floors that will go from being an 8 to a 10 now. So I know I know everybody's tired of next season. It's always next year. It's always next year. It's like the U of A mantra. Yeah. Um, but, but at some point, it will be this year. Right. It, it will be. It's just I, I'm not going to fall into this trap of not enjoying. Listen, man, we, we won at Duke. Mm-hmm. We won a phenomenal game against Michigan State on Thanksgiving Day. Now their last Pac-12 title of the season. You know, we beat a lot of good teams this season, and it didn't come out the way we wanted to, as it has in the last 23, and it will be 24 years next year. But at the end of the day, we're still a top-10 program. I'd rather be us than ASU, and I—I I, that's all I got to say. All right. Listen, we could have a guy like Bobby Hurley. 
and not have any support and have right. a yeah. have an arena that's absolutely run down and should be no it's no better than a high school gym right. right right but it's not us right we have an elite program we have elite facilities we have an elite fan base that travels all over the country other teams other schools don't have that and when we go to the big 12 I do think that the Big 12 is going to harden us up because we're going to have consistent good teams that we have to play against night in, night out. And you can't you can't just show up and then nope. and lay an egg. You have to come in every single night, and I think that's going to train us for tournaments like this. All right. So tomorrow uh, I am going to ask Jacob Franklin because uh, we are flying back tomorrow. I'm, we're going to have a show tomorrow, but it's probably going to be a little bit later. I have to drive back from uh, Phoenix when we fly, but – we will get that out. I will talk with Jacob Franklin. and uh, But, again, no days off around here. You know the mantra. Mech Death, by the way, you said still back in the A. Very much appreciate it. All right. On that note, though, Benwin White, you have been, an, you have been a rock all season doing this. Saul Bookman, the man, the boss, the legend, the best free throw shooter in state history. I am merely Mike Luke. We will be back with you as always. And again, by the way, all of your comments, you guys are absolutely fantastic. You make the chat. You make everything happen. Very much appreciate all of you. Back the A. Back, back the, the A, a baby. A. And back Jacob Franklin. You have been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. We all silly like the mayor. 